All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So the BA275, it's not a new variant. It has been in India since May 2022. And we are now in almost the end of August. So let's first look at the prevalence of this variant. And then we look at a study from Ohio State University that talks about the neutralization. I think that BA275 data has something very interesting. There are some positive things, and then there are some uh, possibly harmful things. But this is encouraging to see that the newer variants are now trying to figure out how to create a balance in their infectivity versus their uh, escape from uh, uh, from the uh, antibodies. So they have to now figure out a way to work with us. And that is very interesting. So let's start. This is drbean.com. In the description of this video, there is a link to a $67 access to Dr. Bean. It is specially for those who are not medical. Those who are from medical profession, it would actually be, they can buy it for 67 but it would actually be nice if you went to pricing page and bought it at the full price. These are 900 videos and it's about 10 cent per video. Okay, with this, let's start with CDC. So this is CDC's now cost. And according to them, and we'll wait for uh, Paul Bork to discuss more on this Thursday, but I'm just gonna touch a little bit on the incidence then we'll go on the BA275's properties. So if you see here, at least their projection, 88.9% in the US is BA5 then 4.6% is, sorry, 6.3% is BA4.6, and then BA4 is 4.3%, and then the rest. So there is no name of BA275, although there are various states that are reporting that they are seeing BA275. Then here, this is UK, and if I look at the UK data, uh, let me just quickly refresh this. If if I look at the UK data, this is August 15. And in here, if you see BA275 is 0.16%. So really low. That is UK. India, I believe, is more than 70% BA275. This is the article. If you would like to read, all these links are in the description of this video. This is the study. Evasion of... Evasion of Neutralizing Antibody Response by the SARS-CoV-2 BA275. Then this is WHO talking about BA275, and that is India, May 2022. Then there are some more links in here, talking especially in this article, there is a, or in this study, there is a discussion of class one, two, three, four antibody types. And I have linked this article here that descri describes what these classes are. Then here is the reinfection with BA275, unlikely after bout with BA5. It is actually interesting that BA275 is not able to resist much from the antibodies that are produced against BA4 and 5. That's actually a good news. And then Roche has a test as well for research workers to identify BA275 in the labs. So this is the links, references, and now let's start with my drawings. So these are gifts for humanity, they are continuing. And here is the summary. Summary is the following. This is a summary of this study. And there are many studies, so I'm just talking about this one study from Ohio State University. This study says, BA275 has growth advantage over BA4 and 5, but very mild, very slight. That is the word they use, slight growth advantage. And to give you an idea, May 2022 is when it was discovered in India. And now we, have, we are in August, so May, June, July, August, four months later, we still do not have BA275 at least officially recognized at a larger scale. So sure, it is going to take over BA4 and 5, but it is really, really slight. That is the good news. 
Why? Because many of the variants are now just trying to straddle, trying to improve a little here. They're fine tuning. The major variation changes are now becoming more of fine tunes. Now, BA275 is still sensitive to neutralizing antibodies which are produced against BA4 and 5. That means if somebody got infected with BA4 and 5, which is mostly recent variants, then getting reinfected by BA275 is less possible. However, it is more resistant to neutralizing antibodies by BA2. So if somebody was infected with BA2, let's say January, February, March, in the US even after some more months, then it is possible that they might get reinfected with BA275. BA275 is a little more fusogenic compared to BA2, not BA4 and 5, compared to BA2, that is its parent, its ancestor, BA275 is a little more fusogenic, about three to four times more fusogenic. What does that mean? I'll discuss it later, but it can bind the cells to each other. And that creates syncytia or units of cells which are bound to each other, which then causes the inflammatory system or the immune system to go mad about it. And then an inflammation occurs. So it is a little more fusogenic compared to BA2. Binds better with ACE2. So its affinity for ACE2 is actually become better. How better? It is really just very tiny bit better. And not only this, that it is slightly better. For example, about three bonds, three new bonds. At the same time, it has also lost some bonds making with the ACE2 receptor. So on one end, it became better in binding. On the other end, it became less better in binding. It lost some binding affinity. So overall, the effect is not a lot. This is once again fine-tuning. So the question you may have, what is being fine-tuned? The fine-tuning is that this variant or these variants are now trying to figure out how do we continue to infect while trying to escape the immunity so we are not killed. So they're trying to strike that balance where they can survive without getting neutralized. So on one end, they're trying to get away from neutralization. But the problem is when they mutate themselves to escape the mutation, the neutralization, then they also are ending up not able to bind with ACE2 correctly. This is what I had said two years ago. And in this paper, it is actually authors hypothesized that as well. They said these strange mutations where some are working for the virus, some are working for us or against the virus, these seem to be a balancing act by this variant to try to figure out, can I continue to infect while can I survive as well? So very interesting. It has nine mutations on the spike region. It has five more mutations in the open reading frame areas. Now, this is compared to BA2, compared to its parent. And it has less resistance against three-dose vaccinated individuals' serum. So that is also interesting. The vaccines are really against the ancestral variant. So three-dose variant ancestral variant, original, that vaccine is also helping against BA275. The reason BA275 has created a reversion. Reversion means a mutation it reversed. That reversal of the mutation has made it a little more vulnerable to neutralization. So it is finding how do I infect better while survive. So this is a summary. These are the properties of BA275 in terms of its behavior inside our body and our body's behavior against it. Now, a little more detail and then a more deeper detail afterwards. So, as I said, nine 
mutations on the spike protein. PA275 has enhanced neutralizing resistance against its parent. That is, if you are infected with BA2, then the chances with the BA275 are still there. However, if you're infected with BA45, then chances of becoming infected with BA275 are less. And it is more fusogenic. So it has on its spike protein, it has a mutation called N460K. So amino acid N at the position 460 is replaced with K. That is the mutation. This mutation has allowed this variant to create more, to become more fusogenic. That means it can bind two cells together better compared to its parent BA2. So here, if you see BA2 is trying to fuse these two cells and just this much of the fusion occurred. Here, a lot more fusions have occurred. This fusion of the cells causes syncytia formation. Syncytia formation means multiple cells that are bound together and become a unit big cell. These are also sometimes called multinucleated giant cells because these are many cells that have become fused and now this one big blob of a cell has many nuclei in them because every cell brought one nucleus to the table. Macrophages does that very often. And once the macrophages, which are part of the innate arm cells, once they do that, they become frustrated, they become upset and inflammation starts. So anyways, it is a little bit more fusogenic compared to BA2, which means there may be a potential for it to be more severe. But, but, hold on. The other changes in it kind of take away from its potential to cause damage. So on one end, one mutation may look more nasty. Then there are other mutations that have made it less nasty. So overall effect is still the same. So it is almost similarly behaving as 4 and 5. This is why it is not taking over that fast. Now this particular mutation, N460K, is also enabling this variant to have its spike processed better. What does that mean? Remember when this variant is going to connect with our ACE2? For that connection and for the fusion with our cell membrane, we need to prime the spike, right? We have to cleave or separate S1 from S2 through TMPRSS2. That is called spike processing. So BA275 has mutation, this 460K, which allows it to be processed more efficiently. That means one variant, one virus, may have many of its spikes become ready to fuse with the cell quickly and efficiently and rapidly. So that can give it the advantage of being more severe. Although, as I keep saying, there are other, fusion, other mutations that you would see which have taken away from that advantage. So overall, it is really not at a great benefit. Better receptor binding. This was really funny when I was reading it. So imagine here is this little cell. It is all really upset and crying because it is going to be held by the virus. And here is the ACE2. What has happened is that on the spike protein of the BA275, there are changes, of course, there are nine mutations. There are some mutations, once again, 460K, which allows this variant to make an extra bond, extra hydrogen bond with the ACE2 enzyme. So these are chemical systems, right? ACE2 is a chemical molecule. Spike is a chemical molecule. And these molecules, when they bind with each other, they bind through various uh, chemical and electromagnetic forces or bonds. And so it has created a new hydrogen bond with N90 glycan of ACE2. Or in simple terms, on the ACE2, there is a region, there is an amino acid called N90 glycan or 
glycosaminoglycan and it is able to create this variant is able to create a new bond there that improves the efficiency of binding at the same time you would see a little down it has actually lost some bonds as well so imagine if you and i are going to handshake and we both have eight hands and we are able to bind with eight hands all of a sudden we have grown a ninth hand as well to bind with each other but at the same time three hands have stopped binding with each other so yes there is a new bond but there are lost bonds as well so once again overall efficiency is still not a huge leap forward so that is very interesting and they they believe that the same and 46k is also able to help make better syncytia as well as i said before then some mutations are increasing its susceptibility to neutralization this is very interesting in one variant now you're seeing the mutations that are making it more susceptible versus mutations that are making it more fit and why the heck is it doing that it is trying to figure out a an optimal balance it cannot just continue to mutate and survive as well now it is becoming handicapped with its own mutations to be able to continue to bind with the ace2 it still has to bind with the same ace2 we are not mutating ace2 according to this variant's mutations so if it mutates too much it will become disabled from binding so now it is trying to reverse some and adjust some so here it has a mutation R493Q. That mutation has allowed it to. So here is the neutralizing antibody. So what it does is it is increasing its susceptibility to neutralization because it's a reversion. There is a change that has allowed part of the spike protein to change in a way that it has become a better fit for neutralizing antibodies and so it becomes especially with four and five and with three dose vaccinated that is original wuhan variant and this variant here is looking all nervous because in some cases we are able to attack it better than ba2 and that doesn't mean mean only the vaccinated they had in this study hospitalized omicron hospitalized patients who were not severe but they were still hospitalized maybe they were mild to moderate they needed oxygen or they like my son went to hospital for fever and so they had taken their antibodies omicron patients antibodies and they found that this variant had a uh, had a mutation which made it more vulnerable to neutralization so that's very interesting then studies show that it has a slight advantage for growth so if you have this time to grow then compared to ba4 and 5 ba275 grows a little bit more but again we have to keep looking at the empirical data the evidence in front of us it is not too much more otherwise it would have taken over the world by now starting from may till now so it is still coming up it may become more here in the us uk and other countries as well but for the time being it is more dominant in india so once again the same summary growth advantage over ba4 and 5 but slight neutralizable by the antibodies against ba4 and 5 less neutralizable by the antibodies against ba2 neutralizable by the three dose vaccine not two they actually had two dose vaccine individuals healthcare workers and they had three dose vaccine healthcare workers so three dose vaccine healthcare workers antibodies were able to neutralize it better that that is very interesting previous vaccines that were becoming ineffective have started becoming better effective now it can bind better with as2 but it also has lost some salt bridges as well so the it has created created a new hydrogen bridge to or or a bond but it has it has also lost some salt bridges to bond 
Now, some more details just for the housekeeping. Otherwise, we are done for the day. Uh, the study included, it's a small study, and they can, they kind of uh, say that in their limitations as well, that the sample sizes are small. 15 healthcare workers who were two dose or three dose vaccinated, Pfizer or Moderna. 30 hospitalized, not ICU bound or not severe patients. Between February to early March 2020, which was Omicron BA2 type time or Omicron time. Unvaccinated were 14. Two dose vaccinated were eight. Three dose vaccinated were eight. And median age here in the patients was 62, 28 to 78 was the range. In the healthcare worker size side, the median dose sorry, median age dose, median age was 37 years and 32 to 56. So kind of more on the younger side. Now, some quick things about these mutations. I think you're going to love this part. So one mutation, G446 and N460K, these two mutations, have increased the resistance to neutralization from BA2, 2, 2. R493Q reversion. It's a reversion, a mutation that has taken it back towards prototype or towards ancestor. It has reduced the resistance to neutralization. This reversal of the mutation has allowed it to become captured better by the antibodies produced against 4, 5, and 3 dose vaccine. And G446S has made it resistant to class 3 neutralizing antibodies. Class 3 antibodies are going to be attached the, to a little on the side of the spike away from the RBD. And class 3 are mostly the conserved, highly conserved epitopes of the spike too. Sorry, spike. However, this mutation has allowed these class 3 antibodies to be not able to bind correctly with the spike protein, so less neutralization. Then there is a 460K change that has improved the fusogenicity. We discussed that before as well. And 446S, that has increased the thermostability of the spike protein. So spike protein, as you know, these... Uh, all the proteins of these viruses, they need a, an optimal temperature for to work. So there is the thermostability that is improved. Once that thermostability of the spike has increased, it has reduced spike processing efficiency. So remember we talked about it, that on one hand, there are spike mutations that have improved the processing efficiency. That means spike becomes better ready to bind with the cell in a more efficient way. At the same time, because of thermostability, increased thermostability, that means the enzymatic reaction that needs to produce energy, it has to produce energy at a higher amount for a longer time. And that means the spike becomes difficult to process because it needs more energy. That is what we say thermostable spike. And that makes it less efficient to bind with our cells. Then there is this um, 493Q change. And that change, 493, that, however, has two potential new hydrogen bonds. So on one end, there is a loss of binding, and then there is a gain of binding. So overall, the effect is nothing. So <laughs> you will be totally fine if you said, so what is the takeaway? The takeaway is, very slight growth advantage, number one. Number two, less severity increase. Number three, a lot of changes in terms of trying to adjust better with the ACE2, but at the same time, some changes that are making it not able to bind better with ACE2 and with antibodies. Still vulnerable to BA4 and 5 antibodies. 
but less vulnerable to BA2 antibodies, still vulnerable to antibodies produced by three vaccine doses. That is the summary of this variant. So let's very quickly see if there are a couple of questions. Today we did a great job, finished it in 26 minutes, although I think I repeated like four times. Okay, so seems like not much questions, which is good. Uh, some side discussions are going on as well. So with this, once again, if you would like to support this work, the best is that you can actually buy drbean.com's plan. It's $67 for non-medicals. For medicals, it's $97. Link is in the description. It's a one-time fee. It is not a recurring uh, thing. And people had asked me that they would like to have the access. I'm going to keep this 67 price for some more days before we take it down. And we'll just leave it at 97 so that is one. Secondly, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee or you can use PayPal or you can become part of Patreon or you can become sub a Substack member or a Locals member. You can even become a member of Dr. Bean over here on YouTube. So this is the discussion. Love you all. Stay safe, happy and healthy. <laughs> Susan says, keep it at 67. Susan, okay. We'll, for the non-medicals actually look there are some folks who generally sent me an email saying we are medical workers but we are not able to and some even said i'm saving up for 67 so i feel bad please if if you wanted to have access for 67 and you're a medical worker and that's all you can afford please be my guest my point is not to try to earn from you it's 900 videos and these are good quality videos, a lot of time. My usually at least one to two days go in producing a video. So this is good work done and take it if this is uh, useful for you. So with this, thank you very much. And I would see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.